I guess uh, it's just been a matter of time. I've been shooting well in practice. Uh, since I, I've come back from my wrist injury, uh, well, even when I, while I was injured, I had a chance to you know, go over film. I wasn't shooting the ball really well to begin the season, so I got to go away, watch some film and work on some things. So when my wrist was ready, I knew what I had to work on. Um, and I've been working on it ever since. And since, since I've come back, my shot actually feels a lot better. This is a, a team that coming into the season, everyone talked about having the four returning starters. And then the narrative that people have been writing, myself included, kept talking about the big three. Yeah. Um, is that ever good to you? Uh, just I'm trying to join the party, I guess. Um, but no, 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 they're the big three for a reason. Uh, you know, they've been playing consistently all year. And, you know, in the back of my mind, I've, been, I've needed to help them. Um, and I think moving forward, uh, like I said, I've been looking over film and looking at different things and, you know, they're still going to get theirs. But if I can chip in, you know, 10 points a game, then it's going to take a, a lot of pressure off them. And when you've got Cullen coming off the bench and playing like he has been, you've got Pancake coming off the bench doing his thing, it just takes pressure off. So I'm just trying to help those guys out. Did you feel this coming in practice that uh, you're kind of feeling it and you're ready to work out? Yeah, I've been, like, like I said, I've been shooting really well in practice. It's just making that transition to the game, uh, finding the right spots. When you've got Kendall Williams on the floor, he's going to find you the ball all the time. You know, he's just so great at you know, penetrating, getting into the key and kicking it out. So most of my shots all, all come from him. So he's been doing that a lot. Um, it's just been a matter of me shooting it. You know, guys are always in my ear telling me to shoot it because I shoot it uh, decent at practice. So it's just making that change just into the game. It, it felt good. These were the two teams coming into the season. A lot of people were talking about that maybe Boise State could knock off New Mexico. Obviously, San Diego State's sort of grabbing all the attention now. Mm -hmm. How big of a game is this for you guys to kind of send a message that, it, you know, this is far from, season's far from over? Yeah, well, I mean, at the end of the day, we're back-to-back -back champs. Uh, so we're still going to have that target on our back. But we know that Boise's always been hot on our heels. It's always been a close game with us and them. So... And I mean, the, the way they play with, you know, with the, with the stretch four, um, it's, always, it's been difficult for us to guard. Um, but I thought, I mean, Duncan played well, the Aussie kid played well. Um, but we made adjustments and we, you know, we, we closed it out down the stretch. So, you know, San Diego State, they're ranked seventh, I think, at the moment. So we'll definitely be coming for them. But the big thing was, was winning at home. You know, we lost, dropped our last game at home. So it's really important to win on the road. Given that UNLV game, how important was it to come out of the stretch as you did? Yeah, I think that from the warm-up, we set the tone. I thought Kendall came out, and the warm-up was, was a whole different feeling. I thought from the warm-up, we felt really good. And then to see Coach Neal walk down there in the, in the blazer, the red blazer, um, we knew it was a big game. Um, and we set the tone early, and I think that started from warm-ups. The guys were ready to play, and everyone that came on tonight, everyone that played, contributed. And, it, you know, I think that's a, that's a combination of warm-ups and, you know, Coach doing his thing, so it was good. Did, did you guys not know about the Blazers until you came down? Yeah, no, we don't see it. No, we don't see it until he comes down. I heard the roar, and I was thinking, I didn't know what it was, and I looked over, and there's Coach Neil with the red blazer on. But yeah, I mean, he's just, yeah, he's been, he's always about fashion. He always has been. He's an assistant coach. Uh, Lamont's trying to take, Coach Smith's trying to take his little role from the fashion thing, but, you know, Coach Neil brought it out tonight. Yeah, it's tough because we started school today too. So uh, being a student athlete, student comes first. So we've got to try and find that balance. Um, and then hitting hit the road for almost eight days, uh, it's going to be very difficult and tough travel too. I mean, with the snow and all that kind of stuff, you know there's going to be delays of some sort getting to Colorado, then our first trip to Utah um, for Utah State. So it's going to be difficult, but that's what conference is all about. And we've been able to handle it fine the last two years. What's it been the key for you guys to have that mentality on the road? You already have three road wins under your belt. So then you guys have been in that situation, how have you guys been able to handle it and come out? Well, that's, that's, that's the difference in winning championships. You've got to be able to win on the road, and that's what we've been able to do the last couple of years. And I think guys on the road, we have kind of a relaxed thing. I mean, there's so much pressure playing in the pit, honestly. It's uh, with all the fans and the hype and all that kind of stuff, it's a lot of pressure to play in the pit. So by the time we get on the road, we feel more relaxed, and I think that's why we do so well. So it's going to be difficult um, in this, this conference. It doesn't matter who you play on the road. It's going to be a challenge. So we're looking forward to I know Utah State's got an awesome student section looking forward to playing there. And Colorado State, they packed it last year when we played, when Kendall had his big game. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Colorado State. Colorado State. I mean, uh, um, they'll make adjustments. It's kind of a quick turnaround um, to play them for a second time. We haven't even played some teams for the first time, so they'll be ready to go. And I know they'll probably be in the back of their mind for us beating them at their place, uh, basically to kind of uh, seal the kind of the, the championship last year. It was it was you know a race between us two at the top though, so that's going to be in the back of their minds for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's funny. It was a shame that Iggy didn't play tonight. Um, I know he's battling a little bit of an injury, so I'm hoping he can get uh, uh, get better soon. But it's funny. I mean, Drimmick and I, we were 
we had a real love-hate relationship back in Institute. We were so competitive. Uh, I mean, we probably fought more than anyone uh, back at the Institute. You know, he'd, he'd find anything to throw at me. He'd throw his drink bottle at me, his heart rate monitor. We'd always be going at it. And there was in one point, we, we lived together. Um, and I, I put him through a wall once. Uh, it was after practice and we got back to our room. We got the fight and I put him through one of our walls. Cost our parents a couple of hundred bucks to fix the wall. So... I mean, but we love him off the court. You know, he's, he's a really good friend of mine and uh, I know we'll catch up tonight. And, you know, he's obviously a great player. He's playing really, really well. So it's just fun. And Nick, uh, he's actually two years younger than me for him to come out and do what he did tonight. Uh, he did really, really well. So it's, I mean, it's a good time to be an Aussie. Nick? Yes. Yeah, he was, uh, he was on the under-19 under squad, uh, just gone 2013 World Championships and did a really good job there. So, yeah, he was after me. It's, I mean, it's close to 100. Um, I still wear the brace when I go to bed because sometimes I sleep on it funny and I wake up and it's sore. Um, but other than that, it's probably, I mean, it's close to 90, 95%. Um, it's just for, I gave it a chance to heal. We, we made a decision to, to rest it and I think it's been the best thing for me. So uh, by the end of the year, I'll be able to say what it is. And that decision to, to, to do the rest, I mean, how frustrating was that time for you? It's tough because, I, I mean, you know me, I want to play and I was able to play. Um, but it got to the point where, you know, I, I was just, I mean, it's my shooting hand, my passing hand, and I'm right, so right hand dominant. So it was a decision. It was pretty tough at the time, but I mean, looking at long term, I haven't had a healthy conference season yet. Freshman year, I rolled my ankle just before conference, even missed the first conference game. And then midway through last year, I rolled my ankle at practice before the UNLV game, and, you know, I was hobbling around then. So just for the first time, I wanted to have a healthy conference season, and, and so far, so good, touch wood. You said the before the No, all good. I think that was just a, just from not using it. Uh, the doctor and NATO and all that, they just told me completely don't do anything with it. So I think we forgot about everything other than... So when I came back, everything other than my wrist was sore. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's all good now. Uh, I just wear the sleeve because um, once I find something right, I kind of stick with it, kind of superstitious. So um, since I've been back, I've been using the sleeve and shooting well at practice. So I just I keep that on there. I think we had a better defensive mindset, um, really shutting them down in the first half. Uh, I think we held them to 27 points while our offense was really, really moving the ball well and finding the open man. And, you know, here we had a number of open looks. I did a lot of players. So it was really a team effort offensively. And we had some stuff defensively in the second half, which we do need to improve on. But it was a much better start than in the previous game. How much does, does it play off each other? Does the making shots help the defense and the defense you know, create the offense? When you're, when you're making shots, it's going to help because. Uh, you're not always in transition situations as much, but at the same time, uh, a lot of where we were getting beat in the previous situations were in the half court and the pick and roll. So, uh, well, it does, it definitely does help taking sh um, good shots in sh shot selection. You don't want to come down, uh, take a rush shot, and that's really when the defense runs because things aren't really set and players aren't going to get back. So, I think shot selection is, has a big thing to do with it, but at the same time, it's, I mean, it's all about the defensive mindset. It looked like they came out and instead of trying to, to put a guard for you to chase around, they, they went with Nick, who obviously you know. And I know he plays outside the line, but were you surprised that they played Nick so many minutes tonight? Uh, yeah, a little, just because, uh, I mean, I spoke to him during the game and he said, you know, he was pretty exhausted because he'd only been playing 15 minutes a game and um, suddenly was starting and playing all those minutes. But um, I think Igor was out with a broken rib or, some, or something like that. So they had to make an, adjust, an adjustment and they went big, big. And to his credit, he does stretch the floor. He hit a number of open shots. And that does make it tougher on helping and recovering and what have you. So it's a different situation. But at the same time, it's like guarding like Allegoria because he is just a standstill three-point shooter for the most part. So it's not quite like, I, mean, I know some teams have tried to try to get the four guards to try and combat you and Alex's size. Yep. And, and you're the guy at the power forward spot that yep. then gets stuck trying to chase yep. down the guard. Um, was it a little, even though they went big, big, was it easier because, like you said, with Jeff and, and Nick, they, they aren't really running around like a guard? Um, I, think, I think the biggest thing um, that I do struggle with is, you know, defending the three-point shot. I think I do a reasonably mm -hmm. good job if, if the man's a pure driver, but um, when he can really stretch the floor, it is something different and something I'm not used to guarding, so uh, it's definitely something I need to work on in the future, but... Um, you know, and there was certain situations where I get caught out, and he made an open shot, and what have you. But um, to his credit, he knocked them down, and you know he's a really good shooting big man. When teams try and do that, try and stretch that four spot on you, is there even more pressure for you guys just to make them pay on the other end and inside? 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, when when they do go the full guard lineup, you really have to exploit them inside. Um, because that's, that's really the only way they're going to change it. They're going to keep going to it because it, it definitely has an offensive advantage. At the same time, it has a defensive disadvantage. So unless you go to it, they're not going to change it up as much. Um, but they played um, Nick most of the game. So he is a big man at the same time <laughs> defensively. But uh, on the offensive, it, it's kind of like guarding a guard. And he's, you know, he's made some plenty of plays since he's got back. But to see him have a night, you know, like night goes off, yeah. five three-pointers, you know, what was that like? Yeah, it was really good to just see him get going again. I mean, um, being out for so long, and even before then, he wasn't shooting the ball as we know he's capable of. So it was really good to see him getting his touch back and getting the confidence. So hopefully that will carry over into the following games. But it was really, it was really a, um, good to see that happen because uh, it really opens things up for us inside and out, and we get that inside-out game, and the ball's moving a lot better. So I think it helps the offense in general. How different is the mindset of that locker room? Um, I think um, I think there definitely is a better mindset on the defensive end, understanding that we're not going to outscore opponents just based on our offensive abilities. And Boise State is an offensive team, and they they will try to outscore you um, for the most part, and they are very good at it because of the offensive weapons they have. And I think that was a key in the game. For the most part, we, we shut them out early on, and that, that was really what opened up the lead. I mean, um, I think with you know eight minutes to go, or whatever it was, they were held to 15 points, so we're really doing a good job. Unfortunately, we let them back in it because we slipped up defensively. You know, we scored 80 something points. You know, that's gonna any time last year that would have won a game by you know 30 because we were holding teams to 50, but. Um, our defense slipped again and we kind of let them back in it. So it is all about defense and we understand that because we've got an amazing offensive team and we're going to score a lot of points, but in the end of the day we've just got to guard people.